Hi, everybody. Um, you can hear me and you see the slides? Yes. Perfect. Yeah. OK, yeah. In 2019, at the Data for History meeting, I did a presentation about the so-called bookkeeping ontology, a CIDOC uh, CRM-based model to express economic transactions in historical sources. And today, I want to go a step further and present my thoughts about how we hopefully can make such a model more usable in a practical scenario. So you see, I threw everything I had into the title of the presentation. And after a brief description of the Dutcher project and its objectives, as well as some examples of historical financial records, I'm going to explain what I mean by resource discovery, semantic constructs, visual structures, and the mapping of both. So Dutcher, the Digital Edition Publishing Cooperative for Historical Accounts, aims to use semantic web technologies to publish heterogeneous historical data from financial documents on a web platform, not only to make the data available, but also to offer a web interface with functionalities for exploration, visualization, and also self-organization. So collecting the transactions you are interested at. So I would like to summarize these three components as resource discovery. And that's important, I think, because for some questions, questions you don't really know what to ask in the first way. One way to achieve this, I think, is a dashboard, or better to say, a faceted analytical display, which allows arranging interactive views about one or multiple datasets on a single screen. And the bookkeeping ontology is somehow the semantic view, the model that makes the economic transactions inside the different historical sources, stored in different information systems or formats, uh, interoperable. And this interoperability is needed to implement the dashboard. So at the moment, we're supporting two interested scenarios from CSV to RDF and from XML TI to RDF. It's more the digital edition approach, I would say. On this slide, you see a mock-up of the res results we're aiming to implement. So different views arise from the fact that the transactions, the common semantic constructs in the historical sources are grouped according to different criteria. This interactive interface gives an overview of all the transactions grouped by economic objects like monetary values, commodities or services, so economic goods, economic subjects that are involved in transactions like persons, groups or more abstract accounts, and other uh, domain-specific criti criteria uh, which are connected to the transactions like dates or places or whatever, what, what is relevant for the historians. Especially the charts on the right side, the information visualizations can help to give different views on data sets. So here you just see placeholders. However, the line charts, stacked bar charts, the tree maps, uh, whatever, seems to be suitable for this. So one part of my PhD thesis, and the project is about my PhD thesis, is to work on the following. How do we achieve domain-specific visualizations which are not that overgeneralized and fit to the needs of historians interested in historical information? So how can we use the, the knowledge that is formalized in the ontologies and in the RDF and in the vocabularies, whatever, uh, to define automated, semi-automated, or at least guided workflows for the development and implementation of visualization so that we don't have to reinvent the wheel again and again. What do I mean with overgeneralized? So please correct me if I'm wrong. I have not tested it exhaustively, but are the approaches to visualize, for example, linked data on Wikidata expressive enough so that historians can decide if some data is relevant for them or not. So I just picked out a random Sparky query from Wikidata and you can press a button and then you get different um, types of visualizations depending on your query. That's a really cool thing, but uh, I think that's maybe not enough. So I want to raise this question. So making good information visualizations is a hard job. It is a pro process including the domain knowledge, the knowledge about the user, the defining the user requirements and making some design choices. So, yeah, so uh, my argument, argument is that we need more customized visualizations that are designed to meet domain specific needs and one uh, domain, and some uh, domain specific needs arise from uh, when you work with transactions, you have specific dimensions you have to work with. So let's have a look together at the domain of transactions in historical documents. I would like to show you four examples, uh, which are, have different temporal and spatial context, different textual representations, and even different requirements that are addressed to them. So uh, that's the first example, uh, the Schlenders, Standersberger Rechnungen. A lot of transactions in this account, the Schlandersberger accounts, from the early 15th century about 
individuals delivering commodities to some authority for some tax, I would say. Uh, for example, Alba Abderecken paid one Müt Rocken and one Müt Gersten, and Müt is a unit of measurement, and Rocken and Gersten are rye and barley, so two types of grains. Um, and the uh, the RDF that is stored in DEPTCHA looks like that. I will just remove this sharing button here. Uh, and this RDF looks, also the, this RDF describes a unidirectional transaction consisting of two transfers of commodities. I removed the second uh, transfer in this example because it's, otherwise it's too much RDF. And commodities are defined by units, quant also by, by unit, quantity, and the type. And then we have economic subjects like uh, Albert von der Ecken, and he's the is one of the economic subjects in this transaction next to Hans Kellner, who was the person doing all the documentation in this uh, accounting book. And yeah, and for example, we have hierarchies of commodities, and we could just express them in SCOS, and we could also do some uh, connection to uh, linked open data hubs like Wikidata uh, via SCOS related match, for example. So one big challenge working with this kind of data are, of course, historical units of measurements. So I played around with the units of measurement ontology I found on GitHub, but I failed to express that the unit is context sensitive in a way that is that it is only valid at a specific place in a specific time. Um, so uh, maybe I missed something, but I was not able to do it in a way that I'm happy with it. So if anyone wants to work on an ontology for describing historical units for measurements, so or knows one of knows one, so I'm I'm in to, to work together on that. Okay, um, the second example are the city accounts of Basel in the 16th and 17th century. Uh, this historical source documents the income and expense of the city according to different categories. Uh, here you see the income from taxes through the Winnungeld, so that's a tax on serving on the serving of wine. So we have no individuals, we have no commodities in that sense, but we have a lot of categories like Winnungeld and a lot of monetary values over longer time periods. I just want to give you a, an impression what type of sources we have to work with in Dutch. So here are the George Washington financial papers. Um, in this documents, George Washington kept track of all his business, stuff he bought, people he paid, money he spent, like on transportation, for example, and we find transactions like uh, Washington buying pork for a total of uh, 10 pounds, 13 shillings, and four pence, for example. So that's uh, an average transaction we can find here. So another challenge I want to address, different historical currencies. So we have dollars, we have pounds, and we also have Virginia, dollars, and so on, and we somehow need a model to express historical currencies and the metadata about them and the conversion ratio so that we at least can um, add the domain knowledge to this, to the data, to the RDF data, yeah? Uh, I think that's not a trivial question to then compare different currencies with each other, but we just want to give as much information or add as much information to the data as possible. The Wigan Day book documents all the business going on in a so-called dry goods store. So it's also from the United States source from the uh, 19th century and different people buying food, resources or clothing, uh, paying with their labor or with money or they are borrowing money from the shop owner. And for example, Timothy Smith who bought a six pound lard and something else. I don't know what DO stands for. Maybe it's just a Tito, but I'm not the editor. I'm just the DH guy who uh, is doing the modeling and the um, implementation and so on. Um, and we want just to make this documents. We just want to publish uh, this uh, documents. And uh, maybe some historians are more interested in the person, Timothy Smith. So his status, his relation to other person, his occupation, his uh, occupation and so on. So DEPTCHA would also need maybe a third ontology or a third format that makes it uh, to, yeah, that uh, allows to express prosopographic information about individuals, for example. So which visualization is the best for which data set? What should you choose? Is the tree map better than the bar chart to give a profitable view on a given data set? So is the tree map better for the Wheaton Day book as for the uh, city accounts, 
And just to illustrate my thoughts, I prepared this, I would say, decision tree. I don't know. Uh, by answering the questions, you could decide. So which composition of wizard structures are suitable for a data set? So for example, if you don't have a monetary manual values, but you have uh, uh, commodities organized in some taxonomy, then you could decide to uh, represent that information in the tree map. If you don't have a hierarchy, then you could just use, for example, simple bubble charts. And if you have places connected to your transactions, then you could uh, put these bubbles on a, on a map, for example. Yeah. And on the other side, if you have monetary values, maybe then a bar chart is more effective, having the positive, negative bars. If you have multiple economic subjects, then a stacked bar chart maybe is interesting or a tree map and so on and so on. So if the source is getting more and more complex, you have more and more dimensions you could use uh, to create the visualization, the visualizations out of it. Yeah. And um, yeah, and, and on this slide, I just tried to show you how to connect, how the connection looks like between the ontologies and the data sets and the visual structures. So just two slides. Uh, I'm still rather at the beginning of the implementation of this idea. That's why I don't know yet which technologies and procedures are useful. There are technologies to implement dashboards on the left corner, maybe not that important. That's technologies, for example, for your bank account when you have these dashboards. Uh, then there are knowledge-based systems, which are so research space. So a meta factory allows you to define Sparkle queries and map it to visualizations um, and so on. D3 JS is powerful JS library where you can create any kind of visualization and make really cool uh, things. And the right uh, bottom corner is maybe the most interesting for me, like uh, declarative languages for mapping JSON data to visualizations, this Vega, and the work from uh, Jan Polovinsky defining the visa ontology and the RVL uh, visualization language. So I think all Shackle, Sparkle will be technologies that I could use for that. So to just have uh, a small summary, DAPTURE is about publishing digital editions and data sets of financial accounts. We are using the bookkeeping ontology as a model to express economic transactions in historical sources. We successfully did this for more than uh, 15 data sets, and I briefly showed you four of them. So DAPTURE is not only about publishing the data, but we want to offer a dashboard for resource discovery, for the exploration of data, and yeah, information visualization can help. I will just uh, shorten it. And yeah, my research question focuses on how can we use the knowledge we have formalized in our ontologies and in our RDF. And there will be multiple ontologies. So ontology maybe for prosopographical information for historical individuals, for currencies and for um, units of measurement. And yeah, how can we use this knowledge graph, this knowledge environment to improve our workflows to set up new visualizations? Yeah, and I'm looking forward to do, do that in the next two until three years. Thank you very much.